broadcasting live from an undisclosed location. This is the TC MMA Podcast with your host, Chris Cross. What's happening? This is your boy Chris Cross checking in. This is the TC MMA Podcast. And man, you know, I was sitting around today at work thinking, I probably won't do one today, won't do a show. And then ding, ding, ding on the phone. Lots of news. Hamza Chamayev's name popped up. So I was like, oh, yeah, we got to do something. You already know we got to do something. He's number one on the do list for a reason. We got to get out here and give you some topics today. And smash that one in there somewhere, right? Karen tries to start a park in Lafayette with UFC fighter Macy Barber. Can you imagine... You come outside with your friend, there's someone sitting on one of their cars. There's a lady sitting on the car, and they're asking her kindly to get off, and she's, you know, a Karen. So we'll get into that. What ended up happening? Hopefully Macy Barber took the high road. That's all I got to say. Yuri Prohaska shoots down Jamal Hill call out at UFC 300. Yeah. In pursuit of Alex Padetta rematch. Of course. It's not fighting Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill just lost. This is the problem when you lose. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you lose, forget about it. Forget about it. According to preliminary odds on FanDuel, Hamza Chemaev is a slight favorite at negative 186. Did that say slight? That's not a slight favorite. Almost 2 to 1. That's two to one. That's not slight. By any stretch. Robert Whitaker and Hamza getting on Bo Nickel today too. So we're going to dive into that topic here in a minute. Jorge Masvidal assures he's making UFC return. I'm definitely coming back. What's he talking about? He's got a boxing match. A boxing match against Nate Diaz. He's on a money grab right now. He's not worried about fighting. And then what's going to happen? When these guys come back to the UFC, they're going to get beaten. It's just the bottom line. That's just the bottom line. Bo Nickel, on the other hand, also offers his game plan for Hamza Shamayev. Take him down. Throw him around. That's what he's saying. Are you serious? So, you know, when the phone's digging and you're reading this stuff, especially Hamza, Bo Nickel, and Robert Whitaker, you're like, we got to get on the horn. We have absolutely got to get on and talk about this. Because what's happening here? Robert Whitaker, you know, didn't wasn't impressed, right, with the Bo Nickel win. Either was Hamza. Bo Nichols firing back and said, you know, more or less the recipe to beat Hamza. I'll tell you what, after the struggle against Cody Brundage, say what you want about Hamza. He struggled against <clears throat> Gilbert Burns and Usman. And then everybody made excuses for them. But when he fought good fighters like Kevin Holland, Lee Jingliang, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It didn't take two rounds, it took two minutes. And this is, then you got Gerald Mushard in 17 seconds. Four other guys that he fought or three other guys, first four fights, gave up like one significant strike. So, and I understand, Bo Nickel dominated. But is he going to dominate everybody on the ground? I mean, as you go up the ladder, it's going to get a little tougher to do that. It's not just going to be as easy. These guys are, are very skilled at the top. I get that you're a big-time wrestler and all that, and I do believe that he might reach the mountaintop one day. But Hamza is going to be up there too somewhere. He's going to have to deal with him. There's other fighters that he may or may not get past on the way there. But what happens is, is these younger guys come in. There's all these older guys around right now that seem relevant, right? But five years from now, all these guys ahead of him that are older, especially four or five years older, they're going to become irrelevant. They're going to be gone. <clears throat> so... It always starts out in the UFC ranking, everyone who's ahead of you. But they start to crumble by age, 
wins every time. Then the true test is when you start getting the younger bucks that are coming up underneath of you. So right now, Bo Nichols got to worry about, forget Robert Whitaker. You got to worry about Hamza. How many year, more years Robert Whitaker got before he starts falling off? Hamza's not falling off in the next few years. So if you fast forward three years from now, it's going to be Hamza, Bo Nickel, and a host of other fighters who we may not even know their names yet. Whom we might not even know their names yet. So, Whitaker saying, saying on a MMA RK podcast, I think we saw some potential holes in Bo Nickel's game. Bo Nickel finally got a guy that he couldn't just do whatever he wanted with. Cody Bunges isn't like the best fighter in the world. And Robert Whitaker's not saying anything. It's a lie. He's saying, speaking truth. Speaking truth. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, all the talk is great. In the next year or two, it's going to be all Hamza Chamayev. He'll beat Robert Whitaker, in my opinion. And he'll take over. He will quickly take over this division. And then he's going to be on it. Hopefully, you know, Alex Pineda has got all these big sites and stuff. And eventually he'll slow down and retire because he's making money now and all that. But he's still young in MMA. Hamza's coming. And it's going to be inevitable that it's going to be Hamza versus Alex Pineda at some point in the future. And everybody should be ecstatic about that and rooting for that because that is what you want to see is Hamza on the highest level catching up with Alex Pereira so he can't duck him anymore because I wouldn't mind seeing Hamza at light heavyweight right now but okay go ahead and get the middleweight belt first I get it so UFC fighter Macy Barber's coming out. Uh, I forget where they say she even was in that part of the story. But her and a friend are coming out to the car, and there's a, some other girl uh, on the car. Kind of like, I guess, seated up against the car. They say, you know, please get off the car. Then words start to be exchanged by the young lady on the car, who's been labeled Karen. And... She probably didn't even know she was talking to a UFC fighter number four in the world, Macy Barber. You know, like, you don't sit on Macy Barber or uh, anyone in her company's car (laughs) and then talk smack because, like, you don't even know who you're talking to. See, and this is where it's so tough for UFC fighters, right? Because they're in everyday situations that people don't even know that this person could just break you. Like, it's just crazy got to be careful man and then Macy Barber is then put in a tough situation because you can't lose your cool I mean no matter what happens you almost have to do everything the correct way you're gonna have to call the police you're gonna have to do this you know you can't legitimately fight someone in the street unless it's just unavoidable like they're coming after you it's got to be really bad you know you can maybe take a person down and hold them down but you can't like take them down and ground and pound them that's just not going to sit well but it's, it's funny, you know? I could just picture all that going down in my head. It's wild. Yuri Prohaska shoots down Jamal Hill call out at UFC 300 in pursuit of Alex Pereira rematch. Okay, everyone's going out there, Pereira. That's why I'm trying to get Hamza. I want to see him speed up. Let's get the title and let's go. Because Pereira's not getting any younger. Like, it's got to happen in the next two to three years. Yuri saying, I like uh, to fight for the title on the MMA hour, especially after the, <clears throat> after the decision in New York. The fact I won uh, the fight last Saturday, that's the only thing I feel right now. And I thought he looked pretty darn good. He's not fighting Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill lost. You want to fight someone that won? You want to fight up? Everybody wants to fight up. Everybody wants to fight up. Speaking of a guy that's going to have to fight up is Jorge Masvidal. He's assuring everyone he's coming back, making a UFC return, but he's got like three boxing fights first. But saying, I'm definitely coming back. Like, what are you talking about, man? 
The thing with the UFC that you got to be really careful of is when you step away and come back, it's not the same as when you left. This thing is getting better fast. Like, imagine 90s, 2000s NFL. You're like, oh, I'll come back in three years. You might get a diamond in the rough that could do it, but if a guy steps away and comes back in three years, he's not going to be as fast. All the youth coming underneath of him is coming in even faster. It's rapidly getting better. The UFC is in the early stages of it hasn't reached max capacity as far as fighting ability. Right? In terms of that, this is like right now the UFC is like 1930s boxing. Like the place is packed and everyone's going crazy, but the fighters are going to, you know, we're, we're going to head towards the Ali of the 60s and 70s and the Mike Tysons of the 90s and just skipping through everything and Hearns and Hagler. And, like, we're headed towards all that. And it just continues to get better. And it will until it reaches its peak. You know? When it just becomes circular. Like any other sport. But the UFC is on the rise right now. And you can't just step away for three years and come back. That's why McGregor's having trouble. Jorge Masvidal would definitely have trouble because he's doing it at a later age. At least McGregor's like, what, 34, 35? He's got some time. But it had to be a major commitment and turnaround. And I don't know if any of these older guys are capable of doing that. And I don't know. Yeah, everyone wants to see McGregor fight. I do too. I'm not going to, you know, if you tune in that night, I'm going to be going crazy. But at the same time, we're starting to get more push towards actual titles. We want to see who's going to fight for the title. The attention is turning up top. And eventually these names uh, aren't going to be as big. Right now it is. It's just Conor McGregor. But to me, it's not going to be as big uh, as time goes forward. It's going to be more about titles, not necessarily the names. Not necessarily the names. It's going to be more about who's fighting next for the title. And you're already seeing that shift. But a lot of these older guys that won and left and came back and, you know, it's good for the UFC, right? Because you want McGregor in there. But as attention shifts towards the titles, you're going to limit the McGregors and the Masvidals. And this is why they're telling Mike Perry too, like, you're not, you're not beating top five guys. I believe it was Mike Perry they told this to, or somewhere along those lines. And it's like, nobody's lying. No disrespect, but you, when you leave the UFC right now, it doesn't matter who it is, the name doesn't matter, and you try to come back, it's the it's guys are getting stronger, they're getting faster, they have better technique in every area. Wrestling, kickboxing, striking, whatever. Like take down defense, everybody is getting better. And the next, you know, year of youth well it's constant in the UFC, but every year the new fighters that keep being added to the UFC through contender series, through regional MMA it, you can't leave for three years and come back and just think, okay, my name is Mike Perry or my name is Conor McGregor or Jorge Masvidal and think, hey, I'm just going to still dominate. Like, it's just three years later, you got to be coming back with your eyes wide open because it feels like 10 years uh, from, uh, if you go in the past, it took 10 years to make this much improvement as it as it does now. Every three years is, is a lot a lot. The level of fighter is changing. It's getting better very rapidly. And it's going to be much harder for these guys to continue doing this. Now, as we jump into the Q&A, M-Think Hulu 30, I believe, says no one will ever match John Jones in the history of MMA. Okay. Jones was the youngest champion, and he's still the champion. Jones never lost and defended his title forever with no lose loss. I believe, unlike Islam, with two defenses. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. But people like like to project these fighters out in their mind. Like when I look at Hamza, I'm already projecting him forward. That's what we all do in the, in, in the fight game. So you're talking about John Jones now. His future's limited. You look at Islam, his future is going forward. And people are projecting, you know, it's a, it, everything is a projection. 
I believe Hamza will be 25-0 and and the champion, okay? But I do recognize he'll slow down one day, whatever, but I believe he'll be 25-0 and and the champion. Until he loses, then we have to reevaluate. But, you know, in my head, that's where he's projected to go. That's why I got him number one on the do list. Islam's right there too, Pereira, John Jones. So both of these guys, I'm with you on either way, either way you want to go. June is the best month, uh, best month for combat sports this year. It feels like we got Mahachev, uh, Chamaev, McGregor, and some great boxing events all in the same month. I forgot about the boxing events. Isn't I got to check on the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul date, Masvidal, Nate Diaz. Uh, who knows what that'll be a last minute call? But you know, with all the other stuff going on, I might have to let that one let that one ride. We'll see. But yeah, June is going to be crazy. June is going to be crazy. At Troy Dean, I feel you are speaking the truth about Max Holloway getting robbed in the rankings. And we said a lot on that. And yeah, sometimes, you know, it's got to be said. You know what I mean? So, Rostifer, I believe, says he also just got the biggest payday of his life. So why would he need to be a crybaby about rankings. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Max doesn't care because he gets to fight who he wants now and is definitely going to be top five next. So why would he care about the ranking now? I get it. Maybe he doesn't care about the rankings. Who knows? I care. I care for him. Let us do the talking. If you're Max Holloway, it, it, you know, if it's one of us in that spot, I would like to think we just chill. Let everyone else do the talking. You know? Because he's like, oh, you got me number nine in lightweight? Okay. Watch what's going to happen. Everybody's going to is going to come to my defense. And that's what I'm here for. What's right is right. Mr. Chow. Zhang Wali is the best. Yeah. Look good. EB Files X. They are treating the BMF belt as a real belt now. Apparently, Justin got uh, pay-per-view points or something for this. Yeah. It's hard because I kept downplaying the BMF belt and whatever, whatever. And then that ended up being the best fight. And uh, Max Holloway got a, a, a KO with one second left in the fifth. Like... If something is on is on the rocks of, of not happening anymore, like because it's going downhill and it's on its last leg, and you know Dana White doing what he did with the UFC, lifting it off its last leg, sort of, you know, this is kind of like that same situation. Like Max Holloway took the BMF belt, which was going to be a great fight either way, and he was just going to win by decision. Okay. And then people might give you a bunch of excuses as to why Gaethje didn't win and all that. But instead, he finished him at the end, and it just left you, like, speechless. Everybody on both sides. Speechless, because there's two other fights to go after that. But it just left everybody, uh, everyone speechless. And now it's like, okay, so maybe you resurrected this thing. And it's just going to take another bad fight, and everyone's going to be like, what is this? But the bottom line is, the BMF lives on. It might just have that luck to where... It's like, okay, you know when the BMF is on the line, something crazy is going to happen. Maybe that if you have that aura about it, it could stick. But at the end, Bruce Buffer, you know, and no. <laughs> That's hilarious. And no. Like, I was, because I was kind of like saying it to myself slow. And then when he said it, like the fans didn't really say it like they would for a regular title so everyone is confused but if anyone deserves to get hear that for a BMF belt it's Max Holloway after that finish I mean it's just crazy it's just crazy it was just a great night at UFC 300 in general so listen man we keep marching it forward we keep marching it forward got the off week this week so we're just chilling and uh you know, we'll see what happens with these upcoming fights. I just know we're six and seven in the division or in uh, the main event. And 
six and seven is unacceptable to the team. So we got to get it together. We have absolutely got to get it together. Big one coming up, UFC 301, Pantoja versus Urseg. You know, it's flyweight, main event, eh, but, you know, still, it's intriguing because it's a title on the line. And, you know, you got that. You got some fight nights before and after. And then we're quickly going to head towards June. We got three weeks of fights in May. And then June is just going to be, like, crazy, basically. It's just going to get crazy in June. But that means they want me to wrap it up, man. You know, you get forced off the show sometimes. They play the music. It's like maybe they're telling you something. Like, all right, Chris, it's it's time to get off here. (laughs) Nah, but listen, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Hope you all have a great day. And God bless as always.